This one is called The Real Reason Why There's So Much Isekai from Mr. Muxt... Muxtata... Muxta... Muxdu... Muxedo Tas... What is this name? Muxedo Tas... My opinion on why there's so many reasons, uh, why there's so many isekais, it's simple. And maybe it's too simple, and it's a, probably a wrong opinion, but this is my opinion. I think that um, there's a lot of degenerates that can really identify themselves as the main characters of these shows. And even if you're not all of, like, Rudius Grey Rat or, you know, Subaru Natsuki, right? Even if you're not identifying with all of different, you know, degenerate traits, maybe there's some parts of it that you can relate to. And perhaps the more you can relate to a character, the more you can be emotionally engaged to the character. Therefore, you care more about it. Therefore, you're going to be, you know, buying more shit or watch more and talk about it more, right? I think there's definitely one aspect to that, but there's more to it. I think there's also another aspect of how the method of isekais, of simply being ported to another world, right? That is very compelling to others, right? So on top of the degeneracy stuff, a lot of people... I think, want a second chance to do something new in a fictional world. And it's so immersive that you could just, you know, leave your loser life and just be surrounded by a harem and do cool shit, right, in these fantasy shows. I think there's definitely, you know, some escapism and, you know, fantasizing about that type of element. The structure of an isekai, due to the nature of how you don't have to do any backstory or shit, you can simply do that later on. You also don't really have to focus that much on world building. You don't have, you, you definitely should if you want to make a deep story like ReZero Mushoku Tensei. But I think that because of the Isekai template, it's easy to just like bootstart a show. You don't have to be the best author and you can just do dumb shit with it. And because of the success with Isekais, you know, rising, so many more people are doubling down and copying the same trend because obviously it's, it's so popular and it's also very easy to pump out. Karakawa, right? They're always pumping out so many shitty isekais on a seasonal basis. And there's probably a lot more reasons that I can't really, you know, list in the top of my head right now. But I think there's definitely more than one reason. And some of the reasons that I just mentioned definitely could be why there's so much more isekais. Stop me if you've heard this before. Generic milk toast white bread protagonist lives such a boring and average life that he wishes for something new. Something... And I want you to take that part and then realize that we can have a rom-com show. Right? A rom-com is basic. I think a rom-com is an even bigger power fantasy than isekais. The rom-com is the true power fantasy because you can be everything that this guy just said, do nothing with your life, and the most popular girl will reach out, then she'll help you, you know, come out of your shell. Exciting. Next thing you know, he gets murked by an Autobot, and instead of dying, he gets sent to a world where every woman he meets is so down bad for him mm -hmm. because of how generically generic and boring he is. Yep. What can I say? Hey, that was Wise Man Grandchild. Boring he is. What can I say except literally me? But if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I just described to you the plot of 90% of isekai anime that are out there. I wouldn't say the plot, but definitely like... Do it's, does these elements exist in every isekai show? More often than not, yeah. And the thing is, even after 10 whole years since the initial isekai boom, and with so many people getting tired of the genre, you would think that we would be- <laughs> Wait, wait, go back. What is it? I'll have a isekai anime. Where main characters overpowered, how original. And he got reincarnated as an aristocrat. Daring today, aren't we? Yeah, the aristocrat! Uh yeah, I mean, born into nobility type of isekais are pretty fun. Getting tired of the genre, you would think that we would be getting less isekai anime, but in reality, we just seem to be getting more and more. Which begs- I, one of these days, really want to check out this one. The MILF one. Where you get isekai with your mom, right? And I think she's popping off. Uh, Ari Furetsa, right? Top right? It's a pretty trashy show. I enjoy it a lot, though. Overlord? is a project that we're edging and edging and backloading and backloading. And when season five announcement comes out, I will cover it. Eminence in Shadow, peak. I don't know this one. Tensura, one of the great isekais being butchered by Apis Studios, in my opinion. Konosuba, fantastic comedy anime. I don't know this one, but I feel like I could have definitely seen this before. Like, it's so funny that the cover picture of this one right beside a mom isekai, it just looks so generic. That even though I don't recognize these characters, it feels like I've seen this show. You know what I mean? More. Which begs the question. 
If you're not watching Isekai, and I'm definitely not watching Isekai, then why the fuck does the seasonal lineup still look like this? Because it's so easy to pump out Isekai over and over and over. Now, Campfire Cooking in Another World was actually pretty good. A MAPPA anime, what do you know? But I think, like, you don't have to, like, most Isekais are so low production value. They're just min-maxing and pumping out shitty isekai adaptations. And I feel bad for shows like Newgate or some other shows, like even like the healer got banished from the party of what actually was the strongest. So a lot of these really mid-anime adaptations that I think is ruining the source material. And I know that because whenever I do anime reactions, I notice that these mid-isekais keep getting views more than actually good shows. Why? Because the source material fans are so loyal and they want to see what their anime is all about, but it's just been done dirty. Because the people like him, they're the reason why the shit's still going on. <laughs> While I do think the 2020s were some of the str- Is it Gigg's fault? Is it all Gigg's fault, guys? <sighs> I mean, the age of regression webtoon anime is upon us soon. And if they just make a shitload of regression animes after that, we can also blame Gigg for that. The shit's still going on. While I do think the 2020s were some of the strongest years for Isekai, everyone tends to forget that we had to climb a tall mountain of trash anime to get here. Yep. For every highly acclaimed Isekai anime Shield we Hero. got, we also got a whole lot of nothing alongside it. Yeah, you know about iconic animes like Overlord, but yeah. who could forget memorable titles like In Another World With My Smartphone? Whoa, 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 whoa. Is smartphone that bad? Is a slander warranted? Because you guys were glazing Isekai smartphone. You guys were saying that it's actually really fun to watch. Maybe it's just super shitty and trashy, but it's fun. Or the dumpster fire that was Masters of Ragnarok. I got no clue. But again, I look at this cover picture. You got a most generic Kirito clone. Black swordsman ass. You got, you know, busty goddess maybe? Bunch of lollies. Like, it just... I haven't seen the anime, but I could just feel like I've seen this anime before based on the character designs because of how generic it looks. And just when you think that the genre is starting to get stale again, there's always that one Eminence and Shadow anime baby. that comes out and just brings everyone back in. Yeah. So I thought it'd be really fun to see what's going on with Isekai today, why it just won't die, and hey. why I think the genre is here to stay. Reincarnated as the world's finest assassin, right? Yeah, this is a good one. I enjoyed this. Season 1 was not enough. It was barely enough to scratch the surface of what the plot could really be. But Season 2, I think, is going to come out pretty soon, I think. Spoiler alert, it's not what you think it is. Yeah, that's enough clickbait for one intro. Roll the montage! Rudy. That's just an empty intro. This is just Mushoku Tensei episode, ReZero. I don't know this one. Shield Hero. Tate no Yusha. Campfire cooking in another world. Eris, Mushoku Tensei. By now, I think everyone's familiar with the sudden rise of the isekai genre. But if by some chance you have no idea what an isekai anime is, and you're still watching this video for some reason, Call an me. isekai anime is an anime where the protagonist gets transported to another world that's not their own, either by getting reincarnated or by some weird anime logic. And that's right. The reincarnation aspect is not important for an isekai. Reincarnation is tensei. Isekai means otherworlder. By merely visiting another world, you are... It's technically an isekai anime. That's why Sword Art Online, if you define the virtual world in the full dive technology, right? Aincrad as a different world and Isekai, it applies. If you, you know, have that definition of what a different world is. Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball is also an Isekai. <laughs> Bro, you, the Saiyans came from a different planet. <laughs> You're another worlder. <laughs> Straight up, that's just Isekai. Space exploration now is just all Isekai then? It's another world, right? And the thing is, this kind of plot isn't exclusive to anime. There are plenty of Western media that you can say are technically isekai. Narnia. You know that Narnia shit, right? Ain't that an isekai? But what makes isekai anime so notorious is just how much there is of it. 
So many stories of bright-haired characters off to defeat the Demon King, yet yep. oddly, we never seem to get there. And a lot of this- Yeah, because if you get there, then the show is done. Why would you want to stop a show? You gotta keep milking. Demon Lord, we'll see him. In the future, who knows when? ...can be chalked up to one website called Shosetsuka Ninaro. The best way I can explain what Shosetsuka Ninaro is, is that it's the Japanese equivalent to fanfiction.net or Wattpad if you really want to get degenerate. Okay. It's your usual self-publishing website where- What's Wattpad? Hold up. I think so. Wattpad. Wattpad connects a global community of millions of readers and writers through the power of story. Nah, that's too generic of a title. What, 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 is Wattpad okay for 12 year olds? It's only available for people of 13 or age or older. Okay, I thought it was some sort of like degenerate, just like smut, you know, fanfic happening. It's your usual self publishing website where anyone can write their own original story cool. where others can Dogens. read them. But unlike fanfiction.net or Wattpad, if your story is popular enough on Shosetsuka Ninaro, there is a chance it can be adapted into an anime. Whoa. I'm not exaggerating when I say 90% of all isekai anime you see getting made are adaptations of serialized stories from this website. ReZero, Overlord, Mushoku Tensei, Rising of the Shield. Okay, so this is the place. This is the birthplace of isekai uh, source material. Hero Konosuba. Big or small, if there was an isekai oh, that came out in the last 10 years, chances are it came from Shosetsuka Ninaro. And if you look at some of the stories that have been adapted from the site, you can kind of see why a lot of isekai anime feel so samey. And that's because mm. they're literal clickbait. I mean, if you have something that succeeds, everyone else is one going to copy it and have their own twist to it. I don't think that, you know, copying someone's work and changing it and customizing it to give you your own unique take to it is a bad thing. In fact, that's pretty much how just like it's just an iterative process of making a good product. Sure, you could just reinvent the wheel, but that's too fucking hard, right? Most people's not going to try that. They see what's working. Oh, okay. I'm going to do what they're doing, but add my own twist and hopefully it's going to stand on its own. I know this sounds crazy, but let me use YouTube as an example. Remember when Casey Neistat was really popular and every vlogging YouTuber changed their content to be more like Casey Neistat? I don't or remember, when Mr. Sorry. Beast got big and every YouTuber changed their video and thumbnails to be more like his, mm -hmm. which is how you got that iconic Mr. Beast style intro that... I don't know if people are going to be doing this too much anymore because of the recent drama, but uh, anyways. Every YouTuber seems to do now. You know the one I'm talking about. You definitely have seen it before. In this video, I set fire to this orphanage to see if I could... Nah, not loud enough. As soon as the video starts, you got In this video, I hire 10,000 homeless people to fight amongst themselves and one person will win one million dollars. Become a wanted criminal. But instead of YouTube, put that same influence on a website where aspiring authors could get an anime brand deal. And you can see why Isekai That's cool. anime feels so samey. Why risk doing something new and original when you can just copy the people at the top and what's pro Exactly. There's already an existing pipeline and in an industry of new isekai titles being brought to the main stage. You don't want to change because the same formula is working. And you can see why isekai anime feels so samey. Why risk doing something new and original when you can just copy the people at the top and what's proven to work. It's the reason why every isekai <laughs> MC looks the same. Kirito bro. He started it all. Who the hell are these? They're all the fucking same character, bro. And most of them actually has a very similar personality too. I don't think Kirito... Kirito is original. Because he was the OG black swordsman. But everyone else is being a fucking black swordsman. And their whole personality is this nice guy. Pacifist. Calm. There's a show we're watching right now called Spirit Chronicles. It infuriates me of how calm the main character is and nice he is despite the abuse that he gets. That's why whenever different isekai MC types have shown up, like in Failure Frame or Arifurata, these Tuka Mimoris or, you know, Hajime Nagumos, where they are not a white knight. They're willing to do dark shit if it means that the, you know, the antagonist, someone that's being shitty, right? We don't take the high road. We go literally lower. And something about that is just so nice because we just have so many fucking just vanilla white knight just fucking, you know, cucks just saying, oh, idealism, hope the same and lives in a world that's basically Timmy's first D&D &D campaign. 
And just like YouTube, individual creators are desperately trying to get the attention of readers and potentially studios. Why are isekai plots getting more? Bro, what the fuck is a hocus pocus club? Is that a magic club? Anyways. Studios. Why are isekai plots getting more and more outlandish and weird? Well, that's because it's literal clickbait to get you to read their stories. Well, that happens in any market where it's saturated, right? Maybe in the beginning, you know, when there's no one doing isekai, it's so fresh and new and unique. But the more and more people do it, right? And it applies to anime reaction in a niche that we're in. It's such a saturated market because of how low the barrier of entry is and how high the peak of the earning, you know, success can be by simply watching and talking about anime. But if you want to go into a saturated market, you will drown if you don't know how to penetrate the market from a different angle and disrupt it. These crazy titles and different, you know, I don't, this is Tanya, right? These crazy titles like, you know, Reincarnate, Reborn as a Vending Machine. It's simply a crazy, crazy, insane concept that stands out amongst the competition. Therefore, people might check it out, right? It's simply just people trying to survive in a saturated market. It is definitely clickbaity. It's clickable, but it's not like specific to isekai anime. It happens in any, any market where people want to get in, but so many people are already doing it. More and more outlandish and weird? Well, that's because it's literal clickbait to get you to read their stories. We went from bland protagoon just getting transported to another world to bland protagoon getting transported to another world with his smartphone. Yeah. Getting transported to another world, but he turns into a girl. Getting transported with his mom. Getting. Yeah, exactly, right? Copy the existing formula, customize it, and execute. That's it. Do you know why Genshin Impact is so popular? There's a lot of reasons. I think the time of when it launched during, you know, the height of 2020 and the lockdowns truly did, you know, attribute to a lot of success. But it's because they saw Breath of the Wild. And they saw, oh, cool concept. We'll take it. And we'll customize it. And we'll deliver a polished product. I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with people taking existing ideas and polishing it and then creating something so good. Now, of course, I, you know, there's going to be some outliers that actually has a good, unique, you know, customization off of, you know, existing working formula. But there's also going to be so many more shitty bland isekais because everyone's attempting to do the same thing and their execution or the concept of their strategy is just lackluster. Getting transported with three moms. Doesn't matter if it's YouTube. Excuse me? Getting transported with his mom. Getting transported with three moms. How about dads? Yusha, Nizembu, Ubawata. Okay, main character gets kicked out of his party, so he decides to take revenge by buying their mothers from the slave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, maybe this isn't an isekai. Someone's saying that it's not an isekai, but it definitely could be an isekai, right? All that matters is the main character was not from a different world, but, you know, this kind of... Isekai and slave market. What, name a better fucking combo, right? Isekai and slavery. Like, it's, it's always one-to-one, -one, right? That's a crazy concept. I love it, actually. It's degenerate. I check it out. I check it out for sure. He got bullied. And then he said, nah. I'm gonna fuck all your moms instead. That's hilarious. Doesn't matter if it's YouTube, Twitch, or even TikTok. If you want the right attention, you're gonna need something attention grabbing. Yes. Content creators will always try to do what's popular, even if it's not the content that they usually do. Authors on Shosetsuka Ninaro are no different. With so much user generated content, you're gonna have to follow the trends a bit if you wanna maintain being relevant. Absolutely. And that is the nature of entertainment and, I guess, content creation, right? Time after time, like you guys know how this shit works with the anime reaction channel. I can't just watch Arcane. I can't just continue Orb right now. I can't watch all these different animes that I would want to watch because the game of the algorithm is I need to make content that my audience wants. And you guys dictate what, you know, the favorable content is. For sure, I could say fuck you and say I don't want to do that and make my own content about different shit that I enjoy. But here's the thing. It's a two-way street. Sure, you can have that stance and say, I will no longer chase, you know, what's popular and just do what I want. But guess what? That's a very selfish and naive outlook on this whole content creation. And if you're trying to make this a career, you're basically a traveling merchant. You're selling a service or a product. 
if no one gives a fuck about that product, why would they buy it? You shouldn't have this expectation that because of your selfish demands that the market should simply, you know, correct itself and adhere to it, right? It's just the nature of business. Of course, there's going to be a conflict of interest in creating art and what you want to do. If you can find a halfway point, a compromise where you can watch what you want to watch, but also understand what your audience want to watch and, you know, have some sort of, you know, alleyway there. I think that's the goal and that's the golden balance that I've striked in my channel. It's just that these are also the people in charge of making the animes that we could potentially see one day. Future animes with lovely titles like I, a demon lord, took a slave elf as my wife. But how what? do I love her? Nephi! Wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. This is... This is... This, this, this Nephi! Zagan! Elf Pride! Elf Pride! Reborn as a vending machine, I now wander the dungeon. I Actually decent anime. We couldn't finish it because audience didn't really give a fuck. But the slice of life nature of this show was actually very fun. And Boxo, very cute. I may be a guild receptionist, but I'll solo any boss to clock out on time. That, I think is gonna happen pretty soon, right? This anime is gonna happen in 2025, right? I remember watching every isekai in 2025 and I saw the title and I thought it was genius because the guild receptionist is always like, it's, it's, like, it's like a token character that exists in every fucking isekai. If you have a guild, you have a guild receptionist, they're usually busty as fuck and they're funny, right? So the MC is gonna be, okay, that's pretty fun. And uh, this is probably not gonna be an isekai unless the person actually got reincarnated as a guild receptionist, but you know, definitely a story I check out. And my personal favorite, only one month ago until the end of the world, I decided to f my long lost love who I spent many years together with, which is a trick because this is not an isekai novel title, but a JAV. <laughs> oh, that's the acronym. Yeah, I never really thought about like the acronym, what that meant. I just thought jab and that's like, that's just prawn, but okay, cool. Yeah, I don't know how to segue out of this, so we're just gonna keep going. Now, is this an excuse for the mountain of trash that we got? No, but it does give you an idea of how there can be so much isekai to begin with. And if I can put on my tinfoil hat for a bit, mm. I think the reason why isekai just won't die is because of one simple- It's simple. The demand is there. Just follow the money. The market loves it. The people want more shitty isekai. And for every one of you saying, no we don't, there could be a hundred others that say, yes, we do. Everyone lives in their own little bubble thinking that that's the world. But you need to look beyond that and understand different people's perspectives or you'll never understand why some things happen. Just like the election season that happened just now and people are so confused on why Trump won, right? You have to understand, set your biases aside and take an objective look around you and realize, huh, people love this shit. They eat it up. And then the corporations are going to make more, more, more. And then they're going to more, more. And then once the demand dies down, then people will come, you know, chase something else. It's that simple. Simple thing. It's easy. I don't talk about myself a lot on this channel as I do want to keep it strictly to anime and the things that I enjoy. But fun fact about me is that I've done actual voiceover work before. Wow. These weren't huge roles by any means, but they were big enough that I was commissioned for them and I had to negotiate my own rates. Mr. And voice if you've actor. Ever had to work commission, you'll know that age old struggle. Do you take the job that you're super hyped for but pays you in literal peanuts or the job that you dread but pays you enough to keep the lights on? What do you do here? You hold down the day job. You settle the bills. And you moonlight. When you're outside the day job, you moonlight the passion you have until you can figure out a business strategy to make that a reality. Moonlighting basically means you have a day job, you do something because responsibilities, pays the bills. But at nighttime, you try something else, you learn something else, and you spend the free time you have outside of your nine to five, your day job or something else to develop skills and try to pursue, you know, a different thing. So I don't think this is really an all or nothing situation. Some, for some people it might be, but if you truly want something, you will figure out a way to make time around it. Right? You can make excuses and say, it's too busy, wah, wah. Guess what? Life is fucking hard. I held on a day job for three fucking years, nine to five, then streamed five to 11 every day. Got two hours of free time to myself and then went to bed and grinded. Because I believed that whatever I was passionate about would be more fulfilling in the future. 
and it's the gamble I took. So you should just moonlight. Super hyped for, but pays you in literal peanuts for the job that you dread, but pays you enough to keep the lights on. In my opinion, Isekai is this, but for anime studios. There are so many underrated mangas and light novels that I feel are deserving of an anime adaptation. Hey, we just had Roche today and it popped off, man. But what comes with adapting those kind of stories are things like high production value and even higher fan expectations. Can you imagine if you Photobol dropped the ball on Demon Slayer and the fight scenes look like this? But if you mess up adapt- Oh, the Boruto slander. I keep hearing that Boruto, like, the animation just kind of dropped off sometimes. But if you mess up adapting generic isekai number 10,005, who who's cares? really gonna come after you? I- Exactly, right? These are just so much- I mean, it's basically my channel. My channel, I am the self-proclaimed shitty isekai, you know, reaction enjoyer on YouTube. And I focus on volume, right? Rather than focusing on quality content, I focus on volume because this is a horizontal scaling variety channel content. And I can just farm anything I want. And there's so many isekais coming out, I just keep farming that. Contrast to like the Beyblade channel, which are vertical investment where I only focus on one thing. I wouldn't really say there's quality there, but maybe it's better to compare other channels who take an entire month of script writing, reviewing, editing process, and doing all of that, and then to finally pump out that one video, which may not even be received very well. And I'm probably going to be making way more money than that guy that spent an entire fucking month investing so much money and time into making a quality video. But due to the nature of YouTube and how, you know, content creation works, my strategy often comes out on top. That's why reaction content is so scalable, low effort, right? Basically just sloppy isekai. The more I talk about this, the more actually funny it becomes because what shitty generic isekai is, how much content there is, and kind of like the identity of this channel farming so much isekai. It just truly comes to full circle where you have high volume, less quality, but due to the amount of demand for it and many people don't really give a fuck about how well the isekais are, you're just going to come out on top. So it's the corporation's best interest to keep farming that shit rather than try to make another freedom, try to make another impact project which will take so much time maybe it's also a similar concept of why 8-bit studios bandai namco the production committee behind blue lock and tower of god they also pursue the same goals of min max less quality just focus on just pumping that shit out i don't know a lot about the business side of anime but i'd imagine these shows are a low risk high reward type deal mm -hmm. oh the isekai anime that we made flop that's okay we got a website full of stories yep like, we got 30 more another one Oh, it didn't flop. Well, <clears> say hello right. to our new million dollar brand. I'd also imagine that isekai stories are probably easier to market. I rate the manga Goodnight Pun Pun pretty high because of its story, but there is no way for me to describe the manga that's easy. But if you were to see big boobad isekai harem on a billboard, that... Yep. Lowest hanging fruit. Do you think people want Shakespearean writing art? No, the average person can't understand that. There's way more average people than truly enlightened academics. It's in the market's best interest, sorry, it's in the business's best interest to appeal to a wider audience. And isekais appeal so hard because it's a simple story you can just follow along. We'll pretty much tell you all you need to know. After all I've said, I'm not saying that isekai is this creatively bankrupt genre. Some of the top animes are isekai, so something is obviously working. But if yeah, and I think there are plenty of great isekais. Mushoku Tensei, ReZero. I'm glazing Overlord even though I didn't see it because y'all fucking ranked that shit so high. Tensura, Konosuba, Eminence in Shadow. That's just to say a couple of the ones that's coming off the top of my head. But remember the rule of large numbers. Take that 1% ratio, remember, right? The more you have something, the shittier, you know, something like that scale of 1% can grow higher and higher, right? 1% of 100 is 1. 1% 1 of 1,000 is 10. 1% 1 of 10,000 to 100. See how the bigger the number gets, a percentage ratio like that scales so crazy? And if you apply it to this whole isekai example, just due to the sheer nature of how much fucking content there is, there's going to be so much garbage, but maybe there's going to be some diamonds in the rough. It's just whenever things get so popular, there's going to be good products out there, but it's going to be so hard to find them, to sift through them because there's so much trash all over just drowning everything else. If I can say something, I understand why people like isekai. At the most simplest level, 
it's comfort food. In a medium where season 2s are never a guarantee, it must feel nice to be able to look at a show and just vibe. Mm -hmm. The best thing I can compare it to is the slice of life genre. You're not concerned with a season 2 with these kind of shows because you're just enjoying it for what it is. I'm not completely sure if I understand that concept of just vibing and not expecting a season 2. I think a lot of people that I see behind George is like, Kumu Deska right now. I'm waiting so desperately for a season 2 right now. No gain, no life, right? That's an isekai. What else? ReZero, I just want to keep more new seasons. Mushoku Tensei, I want a new fucking season. Overlord, I want season 5 announcement so I can farm it. I'm not too sure if this really applies to me. Isekai and Slice of Life fans are just dancing to their own tune, and I can't make fun of you guys for that. You guys have learned to have fun with these kind of shows. In a community that will call a show mid if it's not this genre-redefining thing, it's easy to forget that not all anime needs to be this life-changing experience. True. Has the isekai genre come a long way since it started? Yeah. Do I think that there are still things that the isekai genre needs to improve on? Always. Also, yeah. But that's... Uh, that applies to every genre. This is not like an isekai focus like problem. But it shouldn't sacrifice the fact that it is fun from time to time. Sometimes the best thing that a show can do is just make us feel good and that we can go along with it. In conclusion, isekai <clears throat> will never die. Yep. It'll just get reincarnated into another <laughs> I think that isekai can die when people truly get sick of it and the market demands something different. I think that too much of one thing can definitely happen. Maybe there's a new golden age of regression anime that's going to happen stemming from Korean webtoons. I'm not sure. I'm surprised that he didn't really talk about the psychology behind the whole, like, again, what I said in the beginning. Because I truly do believe that isekais just offer so much more escapism than just regular anime. A lot of people watch anime to entertain themselves. They don't want to think about the harsh realities of the world. They just come back from a job that they hate. School, everything fucking sucks, right? Shitty things are happening. The fucking news headlines are always telling you the world's going to end. And you watch some anime and you forget about that stuff. And that's a form of escapism. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think Isekai offers something even more tangible because of how you can fantasize about being reincarnated, transported into a different world, completely new set of rules, and to really live that life. I think that the fantasy aspect of that truly is so immersive for a lot of, again, degenerate people or quote unquote losers. And even if you're not a loser, just that aspect of wanting something different from your life and how the modern audience or like, you know, the average audience is watching Isekai, the relatability with the character. I think there is so much more than, you know, what's stated in this video. But obviously, what, what, how, how much can you really talk about this in a nine minute, 24 second video, right? Of course, all the points made was, you know, very... I think it made a lot of sense to me, but I, I truly do believe that there's like this inner psyche of escapism and relatability and wanting something more and really pandering towards that specific audience. And that's why Isekai continues to just fucking dominate. But that's it from me. Please go give Mr. Mux. I don't know how to say his name. Check out his channel. Here's the link. I'll see you next time.